Hey there, CPO here, and it's time to work on the yaw control mechanism for the tail motor. And what I'm going to use is, just like David does in the flight test and the RC Explorer build, is use the steerable nose wheel assemblies. They're pretty cheap and seems creative. For the pin, I decided to use a 4mm carbon fiber tube. I didn't have any solid rod, but I think the tube will work just fine and uh, fits in there nice and snug. So one of the pieces I need to drill out to be a little bit larger than the carbon fiber tube so it can rotate freely. I found an 1164 size drill bit works perfectly for this. I also found that you want to make sure you drill through both sides. This will make it easier during the assembly for everything to pivot properly. Then I just verify that the piece moves freely up and down on the carbon fiber tube and without too much slop. I used a file to remove all the plastic that was sticking up after the drilling process. That way when assembled, everything moves smoothly. Then I just press fit that 4mm carbon fiber tube into the assembly. Uh, it took a little bit of muscle to get it through and of course you have to have everything aligned just right. But it went fairly easy. I chose to push the rod all the way through the entire mechanism. Which is why it was important that both sides of that first piece that I drilled oversize were drilled out. Then I used a Dremel cutoff wheel to cut the rod off flush with the assembly. A little light work with the sandpaper and everything was looking nice. I'm using this Bluebird servo and within it is a little package containing some servo arms and this little cross arm is what I'm using for the build. You can see I ended up having to sand down the back just a little bit to smooth it out to lay flat against the assembly that we're going to use for the yaw control. Just like David, I decided to glue the servo arm onto the assembly before trying to screw it. But as you can see here, one side of the carbon fiber tube will rotate freely in the assembly and the other won't. Just make sure you don't accidentally glue the rotating side together during this process. This is probably the most critical step in the entire assembly. Make sure that the center of your servo arms is exactly over the center of your pivot point on the assembly. Now because I'm using a hollow tube, it made it really easy because I can simply sight down and then look through the tube at the daylight and see that everything lines up nicely. The other thing you're trying to do here is make sure you have some holes to screw into on the top of the assembly. So you want to make sure that at least two of those holes are lined up on that top surface. I used a couple of these tiny screws that come with smaller servos uh, to screw the arm into the assembly. It was unfortunate that the Bluebird servo didn't come with any of these small screws, so I had to go find them from another package. Once I had it all screwed together, I used a Dremel cutoff wheel to remove all the excess parts of the servo arms. Here's a look at the assembly up to this point. Everything moves nice and smooth. Now I get to see how it mates to the servo. I know at this point David in his build ends up using a 1.5 millimeter piece of plywood to shim the servo. Um, I had some 1.5 millimeter wood and I felt like it was a little bit too high. I did find I needed a little bit of a shimming but not 1.5 millimeters. That's obviously going to vary from build to build, so it just depends on your exact circumstances. I actually folded some black electrical tape over on top of itself several times to make a little tiny shim. It seemed to work out perfect and I was able to get it exactly where I wanted it. You can see here how it would fit flat on a piece of wood. I think that's going to be perfect. I did make a modification to the servo so that the servo wires would come more out the bottom of the servo as opposed to the side that's going to be mounted against the wood. I just cut a little notch in the bottom of the servo. That way the wires would fit up through there. I also decided to put a little dab of hot glue there to hold the servo wire in the location that I moved it to. Just to keep everything in place. I spent some time really looking at how to mount the motor base to this new assembly that we just built for the yaw mechanism. I was trying to get the holes to line up just right, but also I wanted that base to be exactly centered over the assembly. I ended up coming up with my own solution, I think that might be a little bit of a variance from how David did his. 
I did decide to use the zip tie method, however, because I think that that's a really great idea to implement some failure locations should there be a crash. So for two of the zip ties, I zip tied the smaller holes to the corners, basically, of the assembly. And then I just had to figure out how to attach the other side. So for the other two zip ties to hold the other side of the motor mount, I slipped the zip tie from the top through the little hole that's made in the assembly and then down and just wrap it around the side of the base. And I did this on both sides. So as you can see, I'm not using the holes that are already in the white part of the assembly, nor am I drilling any new holes. I'm just taking advantage of the gap that's there naturally with the way this is put together. And there's plenty of room for the movement still of the two pieces. Here's a closer look now that I have everything put together. See, plenty of room for movement there. and it's held on nice and secure. Then I snip off all the ends to clean things up a bit. Here's the finished piece. I think it looks pretty good. The next thing I did was widen out the holes on the bottom of the assembly uh, so that I can get the zip ties to align better with the wood. The next thing I did was prepare for mounting the assembly to the wooden boom basically doing it the same way that David uh, suggests, making kind of a horseshoe loop uh, and then coming down around to go around the wood. I did that in both the front and the back and you can see I'm using the same space that exists where I mounted the motor mount and it fits right next to it very nicely. Now here's the entire thing ready to go on to the wood boom which we'll prepare here shortly. So there's one other thing I want to do before I do the final installation of the yaw assembly and the servo, and that's to center the servo. To do that, I hook the battery to an ESC and then my receiver, and basically just make sure that I have a default model somewhere in my transmitter that will set that servo position at center point. Now with the servo powered, I'll connect it to the yaw mechanism to make sure that it's exactly where I want it before I install it on the tricopter. So that's it, about eight minutes of video, but I'll admit it took a lot longer than that to put this together. Of course, it seems like everything I work on always takes longer than I think it should. It was actually a fairly complicated assembly, but it went together smoothly. You just have to take your time. Anyway, next up we will take care of the booms, cutting them, drilling them, getting them ready for mounting. Then we'll mount our motors uh, and do some final motor prep before we uh, start assembly of the tricopter. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.